Shalom Aleichem. Peace be upon you. Welcome back to the broadcast. Today we're going to be looking at this week's Torah portion, but not just the Torah portion. We're also going to do the Prophets portion and the Gospel portion. The reason why we're doing all three today is because all three of them are fairly short. Um, and I wanted to do the Torah portion this week because I think it's an important one. Um, it's the last one leading up to Feast of Trumpets. Um, it's just, I just thought it would be very important to take a look at that today. The Torah portion for this week is called Nitzvayim. Let me read you the summary real quick from the portion summary from TorahPortions.org. Here's what it says. The name of the 51st reading from the Torah is Nitzvayim, which means standing. The name is derived from the first ver verse of the portion in which Moses says, You stand today, Nitzvayim, all of you before the Lord your God. In this portion, Moses invites the entire assembly of Israel to take on the covenant. He warns them that if they sin, they'll go into exile. But he also predicts that in the future, they will repent and God will return them to the land of Israel. There's a very famous verse uh, that we'll get to uh, today. It, it's the, ch you know, where Moses says, choose life. Choose life. And so that's kind of what I want the theme to be in your heart this morning. Choose life. Choose life. So the Torah portion is chapter Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 9 through 30, verse 11. So very, very short. I'm going to read it from the Hamash like I did uh, last week. And then our prophet's portion is Isaiah chapter 61 through 63, verse 7. And then we'll do the corresponding uh, gospel portion. So all this this morning should collectively work together. And so I'm praying that it'll speak to you, that it'll pierce hearts and cause many of you to draw closer to God. So without further delay, let's have a look. Uh, at this week's Torah portion, Nitzvahim, Deuteronomy chapter 29, starting with verse 9. Let's begin. You are standing here today, all of you, before the Lord your God, the heads of your tribes, your elders, and your officers, all the men of Israel, your small children, your women, and your proselytes who is in the midst of your camp, from the hewer of your wood to the drawer of your water. If you pass into the covenant of the Lord your God and into his imprecation that the Lord your God seals with you today in order to establish you today as a people to him and that he be a God to you as he spoke to you and as he swore to your forefathers to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Not with you alone do I seal this covenant and his imprecation, but with whoever is here, standing with us today before the Lord, our God, and with whoever is not here with us today. For you know how we dwelled in the land of Egypt, and how we passed through the midst of the nations through whom you passed, and you saw their abominations and their detestable idols of wood and stone, of silver and gold that were with them. Perhaps there is among you a man or a woman or a family tribe whose heart turns away today from being with the Lord. Our God, to go and to serve the gods of those nations, perhaps there is among you a root flourishing with gall and wormwood. And what it would be when we hear the words of this imprecation, he will bless himself in his heart, saying, Peace will be with me, though I walk as my heart sees fit, thereby adding the water upon the thirsty. Please note, I just want to stop and say that that phrase, that line, sounds like a lot of lukewarm Christians that we know today, right? He's saying, perhaps you're going to say this to yourself. Perhaps you'll say, peace will be with me, though I walk as my heart sees fit, thereby adding the water upon the thirsty. 
There's so many who think that, ah, I just do as I will. You know, I've received the salvation. Now I do what I want. And they're literally at peace about how they live their lives. But they watch on TV to, to with how they talk, where they spend their time, how they spend their money. And they say, in their hearts, peace will be with me, though I walk as my heart sees fit. Continuing on, the Lord will not be willing to forgive him. For then the Lord's anger and jealousy will smoke against that man. And the entire imprecation written in this book will come down upon him, and the Lord will erase his name from under the heavens. The Lord will set him aside for the evil from among all the tribes of Israel, like the imprecations of the covenant that is written in this book, the Torah. The later generation will say, Your children who will arise after you, and the foreigner who will come from a distant land, when they will see the plagues of the Lord, will they, when they see the plagues of that land, and its illness with which the Lord has afflicted it, sulfur and salt, a conflagration of the entire land, it cannot be sown, it cannot be sprouted, and no grass shall rise upon it, like the upheaval of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adma and Zobiam, which the Lord overturned in his anger and his wrath. And all the nations will say, For what reason did the Lord do this to this land? Why his wrathfulness and great anger? Now, let's take a minute to think about this for a second. What we have here, it seems, is Moses is saying, if you reject God, if, again, remember, he's speaking to God's people. If God's people will reject the covenant and turn away from God, the judgment is described as the same as what came upon Sodom and Gomorrah. It's very, very wild if you think about it. Let's just look at that again. So it says, if he's, if the person says in his heart, ah, I'll be at peace and do what I want. It says that the Lord will not forgive him and that his anger and jealousy will be against them. And, you know, all the plagues that are written in the book will come upon him and his name will be erased from heaven. And, and then it says, and the later generations, your children who will arise after you, and the foreigner who will come from a distant land, when they see the plagues of the land, and its illnesses which the Lord has afflicted it, sulfur and salt. This is the only place in the Torah, or in the Old Testament rather, where this is talked about again, in like this. Sulfur and salt, a conflagration of the entire land. It cannot be sown, it cannot be sprout. No grass shall rise upon it. Like the upheaval of Sodom, and Gomorrah, Adma, and Zebuah, in which the Lord overturned in his anger and wrath. And all the nations will say, For what reason did the Lord do this to the land? And why this wrathfulness of great anger? And I'm just reminded of Second Peter chapter 6. We're not going to go far into it or anything, but he says, In turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemn them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Peter's saying the whole point of that, other than they I mean, judgment was due, is so that that would be an example to, to the rest of the generations, to future generations, that if you go down that road and you go into that ungodliness and you reject God, and you embrace every filthy thing. That's your future. That should cause the whole world to tremble. The whole world should tremble at that. Because all of us have gone astray. All the nations have gone into complete depravity. Complete wickedness and filth and perversion. Just about anyway. And that's Moses is kind of saying similar thing here. You know, there's going to be a generation that will come after you if you have rejected the covenant of God, if you've chosen evil, if you've got peace in your heart saying, I'll do what I want. They'll be like, whoa, look at all the sulfur and salt. And the, what did this people do that angered the Lord so much? Continuing on, verse 24. 
And they will say, because they forsook the covenant of the Lord, the God of their forefathers. Remember, this, is a, this isn't a warning to all the pagan nations. This is a warning to Israel, God's people. If they will say, and they will say, meaning the gener generations who come in and say, wow, what happened to this place? Because they forsook the covenant of the Lord, the God of their forefathers, and he sealed them when he took them out of the land of Egypt, and they went and served the gods of others and prostrated themselves to them, gods that they knew not, and he did not apportion to them. So God's anger flared up against the land to bring upon it the entire curse that is written in this book. And the Lord removed them from upon their soil with anger, with wrath, and with great fury, and he cast them into another land as this very day. The hidden sins are for the Lord our God, but the revealed sins are for us and our children forever to carry out all the words of this Torah. We're almost finished already. It'll be, when all these things come upon you, the blessings and the curse that I have presented before you, then you will take it to your heart among all the nations where the Lord your God has dispersed you, and you will return to the Lord your God and listen to his voice according to everything that I commanded you today, you and your children with all your heart, with all your soul. Then the Lord your God will bring back your captivity and have mercy upon you, and he will return and gather you from all the peoples to which the Lord your God has scattered you. If you disperse, will be, if you are dispersed, will be at the ends of heaven. From there, the Lord your God will gather you in. From there, he will take you. The Lord your God will bring you to the land that your forefathers possessed, and you shall possess it. He will do good to you and make you more numerous than your forefathers. The Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, that you may live. The Lord your God will place all these imprecations upon your enemies and those who hate you, who pursued you. You shall return and listen to the voice of the Lord your God and perform all his commandments that I commanded you today. The Lord will make you abundant in all your handiwork, in the fruit of your womb, the fruit of your animals, and the fruit of your land for good. When the Lord will return to rejoice over you for good, as he rejoiced over your, for as he rejoiced, rejoiced over your forefathers, when you listen to the voice of, your, of the Lord your God to observe his commandments and his decrees that are written in the book of the Torah, when you shall return to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. For this commandment that I command you today, it is not hidden from you and it is not distant. It is not in heaven, for you say, who can ascend to the heaven for us to take it for us so that we can listen to it and perform it. Nor is it across the sea to say, who can cross the other side of the sea for us and take it for us so that we can listen to it and perform it. Rather, the matter is very near to you, in your mouth and in your heart to perform it. See, I have placed before you today life and good and the death and the evil. That which I command you today, to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to observe his commandments, his decrees and his ordinances. Then you will live and you will multiply and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you come to possess it. But if your heart will stray and you will not listen and you, will, and you are led astray and you will prostrate yourself to the gods of others and serve them, I tell you today that you will surely be lost. You will not lengthen your days upon the land that you land that you cross the Jordan to come there to possess it. I call heaven and earth today to bear witness against you. I have placed life and death before you, blessing and curse, and you shall choose life so that you will live, you and your offspring, to love the Lord your God, to listen to his voice, and to cleave to him. For he is your life, 
and the length of your days to dwell upon the land that the Lord swore to your forefathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give them. That is the end of our Torah portion study for this morning. Real quick before we move on to the book of Isaiah. That last part, I think, is just so important. He's saying, you know, it's all before you. First of all, it, this is not a difficult thing. You love God and you obey Him, right? Even the New Testament tells us this. John says, this is how we know that we love God, that we obey His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. Like, it's not a burden to do so. The same language is being used talking to the Israelites here. He says, what I'm telling you to do today, it is, it's not hidden from you. Like, it's not hard to find. It's not in heaven that you could say, who can ascend to heaven for us to take it? So how can we listen to it and perform it? Like, it's not that far. It's not across the sea where you could say, who could cross the other side of the sea and take it for us that we could listen to and perform it? Rather, Moses says, the matter is very near to you, in your mouth, and in your heart to perform it. He says, I have placed before you today life and good, death and evil. That which I command you today to love the Lord your God and to walk in his ways, to observe his commandments, his decrees, and his ordinance. Then you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you come to possess it. But if your heart will stray and you will not listen and you are led astray and you prostrate yourself to other gods, then I tell you today you will surely be lost. You will not lengthen your days upon the land that when you cross the Jordan to come to possess it. I call heaven and earth today to bear witness against you. You have a choice, is what Moses is saying. I have placed life and death before you. This is what God is saying. Through Moses. I have placed life and death before you. Blessing and curse. You shall choose life. So that you will live. You and your offspring. To love the Lord your God. To listen to his voice. To cleave to him. For he is your life and the length of your days to dwell upon the land that the Lord swore to your forefathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Choose life. You know, a word for people today, right? To choose Jesus, choose Messiah. Over the things of this world. And it's alarming when you see the lukewarmness still. People are not on fire for the Messiah. They're not on fire for Jesus. They've not given themselves over to it. They're not taking up their cross every day and following Him. They're not dying to themselves every day. They're not making war with sin. Rather, they just say, Oh, it's fine. I've got peace in my heart. I'll do what I want. Let's move on to Isaiah. The prophet's portion for today, which should complement what we just read. It's not very long. It starts with verse 10 of chapter 61. Let's begin. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful and my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all the kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called a new name, 
which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be turned desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah, the land of Bula, for the Lord delighteth in thee, and thy land shall be married. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have set a watchman upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest till he establish, until he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. You know, that's a, please note, that's a great verse for us to kind of dwell on. Those of us who've been watchmen, those of us who have been shouting from the rooftops, you know, for seemingly years and years and years and years waiting on the Lord. God says through the prophet Isaiah, I've set a watchman upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Yet that make mention of the Lord, keep not silence, and give him no rest till he establish, and till he make Jerusalem a praise in the earth. Verse 8, The Lord hath sworn by his right hand, and by the arm of his strength, Surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat for thy enemies, and the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine, for the which thou hast labored. But they that have gathered it shall eat it, and praise the Lord, and they that have brought it together shall drink it in the courts of my holiness. Go through, go through the gates, prepare you the way of the people. Cast up, cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world. Say ye to the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy salvation cometh. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. And they shall call them the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. Who is this that cometh from Edom, with dyed garments, from Bozrah? This is glorious in his appeal, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel, and garments like him that treadeth the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment, and I will stain all my raiment. For the day of vengeance is mine, and the year of my redeemed is come. By the way, let's note, that sounds a lot like kind of what uh, is spoken about Jesus in the book of Revelation, right? Like he's going to, his robe's going to be dipped in blood. There's this idea of the wrath and the wine press, like that same imagery. It says, I have trodden the, in the book of Isaiah here, 60, chapter 63, verse 3, I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garment, and I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is mine. And the year of the redeemed is come. So it's like it's this, it's, this is the same time period. It's the day of vengeance and it's the day of the redeemed. Right? Like there's going to be some redeemed and some treaded down. Verse 5. And I looked and there was none to help and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore my own arm brought salvation unto me and my fury it upheld me. I will tread down the people in my anger and make them drunk in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us, and the great goodness towards the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. 
For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie. So he was their savior. In all their afflictions he was afflicted. And the angel of his presence saved them. And in his love and in his pity he redeemed them and he bare them and he carried them all the days of old. And so that is the prophet's portion, which is really a portion of hope, right? Of salvation that is coming, redemption that is coming. But alongside that redemption is the vengeance of the Lord. Let's cap off today. We've got like 10 verses to read. Nine verses from John chapter 12. The Gospel of John chapter 12, verse 41 through 50. These things said Esaias when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. Let's just stop for a second there. That's so important. You, you have... You have to believe, right, the scriptures say, and confess with your mouth. You cannot be ashamed of the Lord, or he will be ashamed of you. These things said Isaiah, when he saw him spake in his glory. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed upon him. So you have these religious leaders, and many of them believed on Jesus. But because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. In other words, yeah, they believed in Jesus, but they loved their positions more. They weren't willing to pay a price to follow Christ. Verse 43, For they loved the praises of men more than the praises of God. Today there's Christians who will not stand for the things of Jesus. They take the world's solutions to the created problems that the world creates. They want to be friends with the world. They, you know, they're trying to blend in with the world instead of being set apart from the world. Why? They, they love the world more than God. Plain and simple. Verse 44, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth in me he that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And him, and he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world, that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And if any man hear my words, and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me, and receiveth not my words, hath one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, that what I should say, and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. And so Jesus, that's the end of the uh, gospel portion. Jesus is basically saying, I'm a, I do exactly what, the, what my Father in heaven tells me to do, and nothing more and nothing less. Complete and utter obedience. The part that I think is sticking out is what we already mentioned. The whole theme of today was choose life. Choose life. I see so many today choosing the praises of men over God. Choosing being trendy with the world over God. Choosing the world's solutions over God. They're... I see Christian people whose children have become their God. Their own children is what they worship. Everything has become their God except God. God is like some distant thought far down the list. 
when God should be first and foremost. When God should be the first you seek. Love the Lord your God with your whole heart. That, that's the greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Choose life. Pick up that cross every day. Deny yourself. Look, we're, we are too far down the line, friends, to be messing around. Many people are endangered of being like that foolish servant who said in his heart, My master has delayed in his coming, and he goes back to drinking with the drunkards and beating the servants. In other words, he goes back to his sinful life. Well, the Lord's clearly not coming anytime soon. I might as well go back to doing what I used to do. I don't know about you, but when the Lord appears, I want to be ready. I don't want to be taken by surprise like a thief in the night. I want to be not shocked. Ah, I knew you were coming. Look what I have done, Master. I have taken what you have given me and I have multiplied it five times. When he comes back, I want to hear, Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with little. Now I'll make you ruler over much. These are the things we should be striving for. Not the superficial garbage that the world is offering. Let us not be like Esau, trading the blessing, trading the inheritance for a bowl of soup. I mean, that's what people are doing every day. They want the things of this world, but compared to what they could have in the kingdom of God, it is nothing more than a bowl of soup. You traded your whole life, your entire inheritance for nothing for tangible things that'll pass away jesus said don't store up treasures on earth rather store up treasures for yourself in heaven where the thief can't break in and steal and with the moth and rust and all of that where it won't corrode choose life i hope you've been blessed this morning thank you for listening Look, this podcast can't happen without your support. It's 100% listener supported. Please consider supporting it by going to scriptureandprophecy.com. There's a support and donate tab there at the top. If you're unable to support it, then please pray. Pray for it to be protected. Pray for it to be blessed. That's all I have for you this morning. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless. Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly.